go. Now I have the rubber fuel line off of the fuel pump removed. I now need to remove the fuel line going up to the carburetor. That's a steel line, and this technically could take only one wrench, but you should use two. One wrench is used against a hex nut on the fuel pump itself, and the other is for the flare nut. Now, the flare nut, we should be using a flare nut wrench, which like this has five sides instead of only two or three sides like an open end wrench. The problem is I need a half inch flare nut wrench. I can't find mine, it's missing. I'm not gonna blame anybody, but I know what happened. So the flare nut itself, I'm gonna go ahead and use an open end wrench and it'll work fine as long as that's not too, too tight. If it's too tight, this could round off the nut corners. I don't want that. If that's the case, I'll stop recording. I'll go out to a parts store and I'll buy a flare nut wrench, which means as soon as I buy it, I'll find the old one. For the fuel pump hex, I'm gonna use a 9 16th open end. And the idea is you get this on, the fuel pump housing nut so that it holds it in place. So as I turn the flare nut wrench nut, flare nut, it will rotate without putting stress on the fuel pump. We don't want that. We want all the stress to be between these two wrenches. So here we go. And this is when my left, lefty loosey righty tighty would help because I have no clue which way you need to open to loosen those. Loosened. Okay. What did I do with the other wrench? I couldn't get this open end wrench to break the nut loose because it was too short. So I put an box end wrench around this end and I formed a lever. Back in ancient Greece, Archimedes said, give me a long enough lever, I can move the world. What prophetic sounds in his voice from back then. The world has never been the same ever since he defined being able to calculate the power of a lever. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and loosen this nut on the fuel pump. Now, there's gasoline in that fuel line that goes up to the carburetor. So when I loosen this enough, it's going to start to leak. I'm going to try to capture the gasoline just because. I'm not going to reuse it for anything. I just don't want to slop it around or causing a fire hazard. So I'm going to try to do this in a way that when it comes out, that it doesn't run down my arm, not my armpit. Because there's only two things more painful than gasoline. Three things more painful than gasoline in an open armpit where the thin skin is very porous. One is gasoline that caught on fire. That's pretty painful. The other is gasoline in the eye. The third is gasoline in an ear. That's even worse than an eye from what someone told me once. So I'm gonna to try to avoid getting gasoline running down my arm into my armpit. Just a couple of little trips and that was it. I was worried about nothing. So now I should be able to get that fuel pump off. Now, having Linda show how to do that is gonna be difficult because it's very tight quarters. So I'm gonna hold the camera as she goes and gets the box with the new fuel pump. 
I'm pointing at Linda getting up to get the fuel pump. <laughs> Take out a box? Nope, I'll take care of that. I'll spare you that grief. Now, when we were at the parts store, I opened this box up because someone on a, another YouTube comment or somewhere was talking about how they got one of these exact units from Delphi and it's supposed to come with a gasket. Theirs did not have a gasket. I opened ours up to make sure it had a gasket. Otherwise I would have purchased a gasket. And I saw we had a gasket. Actually, we have two gaskets. My guess is they're the same, and they're in there twice. In case someone screws one up, they can use the other one. Not too hard to screw up a gasket. So I'll put the gaskets up here where I will find them later, I hope. The fuel pump, very simple device. There is an actuating arm on the front of the camshaft is what's called an eccentric lobe that will rub against here in an oblong sense. And when it does that, it makes this arm go up and down now listen, as it goes up and down, it'll suck from the fuel tank side and it will under pressure send fuel up to the carburetor or the fuel filter. And these things typically will do 38, maybe 30 to 60 gallons per minute with this operating a certain number of strokes per second. And I believe it's five to 10 pounds of pressure. I haven't looked for years. So, but pressure and volume are the two things we want coming out of these fuel pumps. The way these things mount is there are two bolts, one here and one here, where this is up on, the engine block, or in the case of this vehicle, there's a small standoff between the engine block and the fuel pump, and those bolts have to come out. Now, I did not check, and I should have thought to, but I didn't until a few minutes ago, to make sure that the distributor rotor is pointing toward numbers two and six cylinder. And the reason for that is because when the rotor is pointing to cylinder number two and six in firing position, the eccentric lobe is up highest away from this arm. So you don't have to put a lot of pressure on this thing to get it in place. If I am unfortunate and that eccentric lobe is way down low, then this thing is gonna take a lot of pressure for me to get in place to bolt it in. If it becomes too much of a hassle, I will lower the car and I will rotate the engine until the distributor rotor is pointing towards cylinders two and six on the distributor cap. But there's like one chance out of four, maybe one out of eight, I'm close enough to where it won't be a problem. Um, I haven't done one of these replacements for decades. That's why I forgot. Now, speaking of forgetting, even though we use really good oil, when I first put this in, this is going to be bare metal going up a fuel pump eccentric lobe 
that has oil on it from the last time I ran this engine four months ago. I don't want to dry run this because it could score the eccentric lobe or the arm. So I'm going to off camera get some wheel bearing grease, a mobile one synthetic and put a thin film right here. So when I first put this in place and it's under pressure and the engine starts to run, it'll at least be lubricated with something. And in very short order, engine oil will get down between that eccentric lobe and the actuating arm to the fuel pump and clean off that wheel bearing grease and replace it with good engine oil, which I use AMS oil synthetic with zinc. The zinc additive cannot be used for cars with catalytic converters, but it's necessary for older cars with flat tappet camshafts and lifters. Otherwise, the cam lobes will get wiped out quickly. Okay, Linda's gonna stop this video. I'll lube this thing. I will take off the old pump. I'll put the new one in place after I goop up the gasket and we'll come back and finish this up. I'm sorry that it's such tight quarters that it's not gonna be possible to show how to replace the pump itself, but it is very easy other than tight quarters. It's self-evident what to do. Okay, got it. As you take a look at these frames, you'll notice next to the fuel filter, the oil filter has been removed. I did that so I could get to the fuel filter more easily. We also took the oil filter out to have an easier accessibility here. Yeah. It's not easy to get to. Uh, he's making it. And looky here. Can you tell anything by looking at it that it was not working properly? Not yet, but I could put this on a bench vise, pry off this outer shell, and look at the diaphragm to see where it was leaking internally. Now the really good news looks like the entire gasket came off so I won't have to do a lot of scraping of the old gasket on the engine so that's really good news so I'll put this over here if I get ambitious later I will peel it apart and take a look and see where it was leaking internally help me remember the two bolts are up here got it Okay. 